So everyone's been getting on me about the filters I was using. And I was like, no, but I want to debut my lights in the Scorpio video. Hi, Scorpio. We'll talk, but let's shuffle while we talk. The past just doesn't ever leave you guys alone, huh? It haunts you, and right now, things are going retrograde, which will force you <clears throat> into some situations you may not necessarily want. Three of Cups, Five of Wands. My, my, what a way to start a reading. So let's start with the obvious stuff. Three of Cups. If you are currently dealing with someone who has a significant other, Scorpio, or if you are dealing with more than one person at a time, that comes up right away, and the conflict that can then ensue. It can also be merriment in excess, self-medicating, etc. that leads to conflict. Conflict is brewing for Libra and for you guys as well. Somehow people really want to test you. Which is weird because we just went through this whole thing. You're like, wait a minute, but just two months ago I let you off the hook and now you're trying to test me again. What's going on? Where's my video though? Because I'm about to really hurt some people. But where's my video though? Texting your friends. But where's our video though? It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect for the Scorpio video. Shout out Supreme. Shout out Kat Von D for the most gorgeous palette. Saint and Sinners look. Oh, and I did this just like this. Sick. The way the pigment stays on, sick. The Sun and the Eight of Cups. You know what this looks like to me? This looks like something that you really didn't want to leave behind, but you left behind, and now you get to go at it again. The season comes back around. Ooh. Three of Cups, Five of Wands, the Sun, and then the Eight of Cups. From Five of Wands to the Sun. Interesting. Out of your conflict and chaos, something great will occur, something very productive, something... The sun has to do with promotion. It has to do with <clears throat> belief in self, right? Your sun, your first house, wherever the sun falls in your chart, for you guys, for Scorpios, in Scorpio, that's about you. That's about how you feel about you, right? So... You feel great about you. And now when things don't jive, when they're not meeting you on that level that your self-love is at, it's really confusing. Like that just doesn't go together. It's very confusing when you know this is what you're like, which is you feel great about who you are. And then the treatment that you're receiving either because someone is choosing to spend time with someone else and not be honest with you or because uh you are being passed over in a work situation or because your actions are now bringing consequences that you don't really want to deal with and so all kind of culminating in this five of wands energy and the sun coming in as your sense of self and going you know what i'm too good for this whether i created the situation or somebody else it doesn't matter I'm too good for this. I don't want to do this. I'm, I'm better than this. Forget this. Okay? So there's that's one way to look at it. And I would say this would then be the career way to look at it. So this would be, Scorpio, your career reading for April. There are several people that are vying for the same situation, let's say. And it's causing quite some conflict outside and inside, externally and internally for you because you are well aware of your value and it's bugging you out that you have to even say anything. At this point, I think you would rather just walk. 
Now, if it's a love situation, let's, let's look at them again. There was a time in your life when fun wasn't a choice. Now it's become a choice. We're in a time right now where Scorpio is definitely choosing to either work or have fun or have a relationship. It's very much like I'm in control of what I'm doing. But there was a time when you were not quite as in control because you were in love. Really in love. You know how you guys have like gradients? Like you'll meet people who have like been in love with the Scorpio and they'll be like, oh, I was so in love with him or oh, I was so in love with her. And then you talk to the Scorpio somehow or you know, you know them or something. And they're like, who? What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, no. She was nice. And you're like, no, dude, I think you were like the love of her life or something. Never mind. Um, you know. Oh, really? That's sweet. <laughs> so. <laughs> but then there are people that you have that for and that's it and, and and not to say that you know when he was with that girl he wasn't like loving on her I'm sure he was like right but it's not something that lasted and stayed and then there are certain things what I say at the beginning the past just stays with you then there are certain people certain situations that just stay and, and they linger so much and you guys have a way of keeping them alive in your you know when you're so um finely rooted to the subconscious. There's so many different ways to be rooted to the subconscious, but the way that you guys are, when you are that way, it can become really difficult to let go of a string between you and someone that you really cared about because you're so tied into the medium where those strings exist all the time, you know? So maybe if you could have a break from that, maybe if you weren't always totally connected, then you wouldn't always feel the tug of that string. And I don't think it's coincidental that most uh, of the people that I speak to who are deeply involved in a karmic relationship, or so they think, are generally involved with a Scorpio. So I think that you, I know, um, I believe, let's say, that you guys are just on duty all the time. You know, you're kind of like on call. Um, and that can make it hard when you're trying to get over something and you're trying not to be so connected because then you feel that particular connection so keenly. And especially if something went wrong with that connection and you felt like there was somebody else involved or you felt betrayed or you felt lied to. We've spoken about that several times about how you guys hate being lied to you know you can lie to a gemini all day they might even know you're lying and never tell you about it and never hold it against you and just be like that's fine you know you tell a scorpio you like purple best and then you change it to indigo you know and they're like what no nothing i just thought i knew you <laughs> Sorry, that's my really lame impression of how cool you guys are. Anyway, so um, sorry. So you felt lied to in some way. You felt deceived. There was another party somehow, or you were the one doing the deceiving, and yet you were the one who still feels bad and hooked into it. It happens. No judgment. And yet we find ourselves here, five of wands. Now, if this is a love reading, if we look at it from the perspective of love and relationships and friends and family and all of that, your emotional connections. The Five of Wands is an irritating card to get because, you know, you've been titering this venom like we talked about. And that's awesome. And hopefully you've been, you know, medicinally handing that out and helping people you love and yay, you know, great. And now Five of Wands. Like, if I'm doing so well and I'm being so nice, 
Why are you testing me? And I'll tell you why. Because they can see already what you can't see. Here's the irony of being a Scorpio. I love this. You guys can see everything that nobody else can see, but we can see you. Nobody wants your job. I, I keep telling you this. Your job is terrifying. Nobody wants your job. We're lucky because we you have to do the job. We get to just look at you. We get to watch you do it. And it's like awesome because you don't have to do it yourself. But you can get all the benefits of like the spooky shit. As you know. So in terms of the five of wands. People are drawn to you right now. And sometimes when people are drawn to you, they're not really sure how to act. I, I've done it. You know, I've done it. Like, I, I don't know what to say, so I'll say something stupid. Or people have a tendency to get awkward and, like, overreact sometimes or kind of end up looking dorky around you guys. Because it's hard, right? Because if you're sitting there, like my famous Scorpio, like if you're sitting there doing nothing and just looking at people for, like, 20 minutes... You know, anyone is going to act like an idiot. Of course, they're going to be like, oh, hi. Oh, so, um, man, you're still uh, so uh, intense. Um, so, you know, and you guys just let the person flounder. You guys just sit there and like, and the person's like going nuts. Like, um, geez. Uh, so, you know, I turn into Morty. Uh, oh, geez, Rick. So, when people do that, what I just did, which probably irritated all of you, sorry, um, you know, then this happens, because when people act like that, you don't realize they're acting like that because of the effect that you're having on them. You think they're acting like that because they're stupid, and then you usually, you know, say something mm, fairly horrible, and then, ah, so... Here, what we're looking at is, hey, those people are doing what they're doing because they're so attracted to you because everything revolves around the sun. So apparently everything is revolving around you right now. This is what this is saying. If this was the road sign, as we often talk about the major arcana being, this is the one for the circle, the roundabout. You're in the middle. Everything's revolving around you. So of course, everyone seems stupid because they're trying to, you know, kick it with you and you're like <sighs> so let's talk about this in terms of relationships and love so you're very attractive everything is revolving around you but also this is about you getting to figure out some you know probably pretty primary stuff about how you are in relationships because this past is coming at you and whatever you didn't figure out which is why this situation didn't work out whatever it was it has something to do prime with your primary self and you're going to have a chance to look at it again, which is really cool. And it's exciting because you guys do live so much in the past. So it's nice to indulge that once in a while. You know, I don't think you should do it too much, but I mean, you got a bunch of retrograde, like let's do it. Wallow. You want to wallow? Wallow in the past. The past is coming back at you. So you may as well, you know, catch up on it. Let's see what else. Don't you love when you can just shut the fuck up around somebody sometimes? Boom! God, I love when the Gemini card comes up in the Scorpio. Personal reasons, personal reasons. The world is the bottom of the deck. Underneath the Knight of Cups, my favorite form of you. You know this. The young, the soft-hearted, the kind of naive and yet intensely deep 
wide-eyed, the whole world in front of you, open to you, love seeking you out, that version of you. Love that version of you. And here you are. Actually, money's looking really good too. Money hasn't been looking bad for a minute though. So, you know, you guys are, let me put it this way. The reason it's working out for you guys right now in terms of money, of course, it's planetary, right? But also, I think it's because there is a resolve with Scorpios that's very intense, not to overuse the word, but it's it, it's a really vehement sort of resolve. And in a workspace, that really does wonders for you because that's what people want. They want... Um, someone who is intensely passionate about what they're doing. And I feel like Scorpios are able to turn on intense passion like it's on tap for you guys, regardless of what you were doing. So success is kind of insured as long as, you know, there is sufficient uh, care of trauma and, you know, cleaning out of wounds and etc. So if that is properly done, and that can be done at any time, um, the chances for success are very, very high. And here you see, okay, so the major arcana that are out are the sun, the lovers, and the world. So you see, when I say that everything is revolving around you, right? It is not Scorpio season, but it's kind of always Scorpio season is what this is kind of saying, right? When you have that much revolving around you, that much energy coming towards you, that much, you know, the world is also money. The world is more than money. The world is opportunity that well think about it you know something that came from halfway across the world that you've never heard of and it was just this great opportunity and you could make super you know just amounts of money the world card is about things coming at you from all sorts of different angles from all over the world from all over the sphere and the realm and it's all coming through the funnel of something super positive and then if that wasn't enough, you have this, you know, being like, no, it's going to be very positive. Just, you know, just chill. And then if that wasn't enough, boom. So the energy coming in, just to be very specific, the cards are like the energy coming in is wonderful, but it is a multifaceted wonderful. It's not just about money. It's not just about love. It's all of the things are looking so positive right now. And yet, you know, don't forget you do have this five of wands and three of cups at the beginning. The three of cups can be celebration, but not with the five of wands there. And then the eight of cups is also a card of quite some somber emotion, right? Eight of cups and the lovers is an interesting sequence because we often hear about how one door has to completely close before another opens. But here you are returning back to that which is, it seems you were always returning back to. And if that person is a Gemini, you know, they're ready for you. And they kind of have the world on their side. It's like everyone's rooting for them. So if, if you're into it, you know, happy, happy uh, love life. <clears throat> if you're not into it, you should probably talk to that air sign quickly. Uh, before they get too wrapped up in you or you know before they no too late okay so let's see so now let's pull an outcome card and then we'll look at all the cards together you can take a look at all of them just a general look at like from now until mid-april what it looks like even into the end of april we'll see what the bottom of the deck is Let's see. I really like the Knight of Cups for you. Whenever it comes up, I'm always really happy because it means that you're not too stressed and you're not too ambitious. You're not being too hard on yourself. You're taking it a little easier. The Three of Cups is also about having fun. So April is about having fun, but that fun can very quickly turn to conflict just because of the amount of success you're having. It's like people have a much shorter fuse around you when the jealousy kicks in. You know, there's like a lot that people will tolerate from each other. 
but not from you and not when, you know, you're doing so well. And now, outcome cards are Ace of Wands and the Justice card, so the Libra card. This is, after all that shuffling, the Hanged Man is still the bottom of the deck. I didn't show you before, but it was the bottom of the deck before. So, let's look at that in a minute. Now, Justice and Ace of Wands. Contracts, huge new opportunities. Um, we do have Uranus moving into a place in a month that opposes you. And so everyone who has Natal, Uranus, and Scorpio, it's a certain amount of years from the mid-70s into the beginning of the 80s, our um, Uranus opposition also called the midlife crisis or the kundalini rising, depending on what culture we're referring to, begins. And so the five of wands can also very easily refer to that, but the eight of cups is about now getting to use a new rebellious sort of electricity to re-energize whatever it was that you didn't have, like the moxie to get done before or however that didn't work out, whatever you were lacking, now the way everything is moving, it comes in to give you that opportunity, but also to give you better tools so you can accomplish something I think you've wanted for a long time. Now, if this is work, uh, contracts and opportunities and promotion and more money, read the contracts carefully. I'm not one of those people who's like, don't sign anything. Um, I don't know. I just don't, I just don't think you need to, you just need to be as diligent as you would be any other time, which I know you would be. So I think that's advice for people who are otherwise sloppy. Like what's the point of telling a Virgo about Mercury retrograde? They're like super analyzing every single thing they're doing anyway. You know, like they're not going to mess up. So you know, technology and stuff can mess up, but I know in terms of if it's justice that's coming up, I know in terms of contractual agreements and legal stuff, just go through it. Just go through it very, very carefully. But it's coming up with the Ace of Wands, which means the contracts that you will be approached with this month, beginning this month and probably into the next 11 months, are super positive. You will make quite a lot of money in whatever endeavor you get into now that would require contracts. And if you are dealing with someone who wants to take what you're doing globally, I know that's a very small niche that I'm talking about now, but if you are working on something that would give you global reach somehow, go for it, go for it, go for it. It looks awesome. Bottom of the deck, what we're going to look at in the extended, okay? Hanged Man, Knight of Pentacles, Page of Swords. I told you that air sign is not playing. Eight of Wands, but it looks like you develop some kind of dominion over the situation. The Chariot. And then, boom. Strength and your card. But we'll look at all of that in the extended. For now, I'm going to have you take a look at these cards. I'm just going to pause you for a second so I can set this up a little nicer. But um, before I go... I just wanted to say, I feel like last month's video is one of the best videos I've done so far. I think it was visually beautiful. I think the reading was spot on. I loved your responses. I, I was just really proud of it. And once again, I'm having a moment that I'm really proud of and you were directly involved in it. So thank you. Um, yeah, that's about it. All the info about the extended readings and everything that's all through my site now. And you can find that all below. So let's take a look at these cards. I'll be right back. Hi. All right. So take a look. Three of cups, five of wands, the sun, eight of cups. The lovers, the world, 
two of pentacles, knight of cups. Now when you see them like this, you can see the story, right? There is a set of behaviors that led to a lot of conflict. There was a time in your life where the celebration was off the chain and it led to a lot of conflict. Now the way the planets are moving, that time has come back around and the re-examination of that thing is possible. It's possible in a way that you never thought was possible because there is so much working in your favor that it's almost absurd. So when that thing comes back around, my advice to you is, is to not fall into the Five of Wands energy and not to fall into the Three of Cups either. But instead to play with the situation. <clears throat> Don't be too serious. Take it light at first, even though I know your feelings are very deep about this thing. Now, in terms of work, you have to check yourself and see where you might be slipping up and the conflict that's caused might also be because you're not focused and you're not focused because there is something else going on with you there are energies that are pulling on you because you are radiating you may find this to be a time where you want to leave where you work and i think that if there's too much conflict in the situation that you should because you can't work with stress after you make the decision that most honors you, you will externally find that as well. And everything around you will begin to echo it by the end of the month. The Two of Pentacles comes up here to assure you of financial success, but also remember to keep it easy. Keep it light. Don't get too serious about it. Don't get stuffy. You know? Uptight. That's the word I was looking for. Don't be uptight about it. And then the Knight of Cups. Walking into May, really feeling great, unburdened, capable, feeling like we have everything we need. So much so, in fact, that we feel like we can offer something to another. Wonderful. Exactly how we want to feel. And of course, because you have so much good stuff guiding you. So don't let the Three of Cups get in your way see it at the beginning of the month, it will exhibit itself to you. See it for what it is and pull back from that energy. And how will you be able to recognize where this energy is working in your life, wherever the conflict is? Wherever the conflict is, pull back. Remember that everything right now is revolving around you and some of those things need to spin away. And in some cases, you are spinning back. In most cases. And understand now that you really do want, but didn't think you could, I mean, it would have to be divine intervention. And now in April, you may get a taste of that. And I know that's scary. That's why I'm saying keep it light. Because walking into May, you are feeling really, really good. So I know you're handling this okay. Just don't let this be the quicksand before the month even starts because it will definitely be there at the beginning just to trip you up and then as we walk into may the end of april feeling great we encounter the institution justice and karma in a positive way so contracts going well negotiations going well work stuff going well legal stuff going well karmically being awarded you know how we often talk about karma with scorpios and how it comes back to you and people have a tendency to love to say that to you well karma is going to get you scorpio karma here paying you and saying here you have a balance on this account here's some good stuff now this is what makes the bottom of the deck interesting because look at all of this potential, look at all of this fire, look at all of this success and all these boons, right? So then why, again, for the second time, the hanged man? I think I know why. This is overwhelming. This is overwhelming. So what do I mean by this and this? Success, wealth, being magnetic, it can be overwhelming when it's on this level. People and the nonsense they bring to you when they feel this energy coming off you is also very hard to deal with. But you are able to keep your composure and 
keep yourself in a very positive space. Enough so that even more good stuff comes to you. So wonderful. But I think you're going to need to rest. I think all of the cards under here are about soothing, healing, resting, rebuilding you. This is a lot. I think May starts with rest. So we'll look late April and into mid-May in the extended. The link for the website is below. If you just go to the website and click over where it says extended reading, um, you go to the website and then you click extended reading and it'll take you there. And you can download, stream, rent, buy. It's instant. Or if you'd like to buy through Shopify and wait for a link, the link is below as well. And the New York City event is sold out, but the Atlanta event still has a few seats left. So that link will be below as well as the pre-sale, pre-order for my book, which should be out, inshallah, in a few months. All right, I love you! I'll see you in the extended.